Welcome to LinkedIn Heroes Entrepreneurs Making an Impact. Joining me today is Jack DeLosa. Jack, welcome to LinkedIn Heroes. Thanks for having me, Nathaniel. Great to be here. For any of the people that are watching that uh, may not know, you know your background, would you mind telling us, first of all, how you first got into business? What was your first venture? My first venture, I, I, you know, I, I really got into business at the age of six. Now, I didn't, but I did. My parents run a not-for-profit organisation called Breaking the Cycle, and they'd take long-term unemployed youth, like youth at risk, off the street. They'd put them through a training program and then place them into employment. Um, and so that was the environment I grew up in. My mum was the head trainer, my dad was the managing director, uh, and mum would teach them life skills, employability skills. And so I'd literally be wagging school in like prep and grade one and, and, and spending days at a time with mum in a room, to, you know, having her teach these young adults life skills. And so Breaking the Cycle taught me that it doesn't matter just how challenging a background somebody comes from, uh, they still have the capacity to grow into somebody and, 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 and create a life uh, that's truly aligned to the vision that they might create for their own life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, so Breaking the Cycle was hugely meaningful for me in the fact that understanding that the world needs changing, the traditional career path and the traditional education path doesn't work for everybody, and the world is changeable. It doesn't matter how challenging a background someone comes from, they can still change their life. Mm -hmm. um, and then the government pulled the funding from Breaking the Cycle, it was a not-for-profit organisation, so all of the great work they did collapsed, uh, we had, you know, some of the students living with us that became like my brother and sister. Um, and I think that's where I got my commercial side from. I always wanted to build businesses to influence people for the better. Uh, but I knew I didn't want to be reliant on government or charitable donations yep. or anything like that. And so I needed to become an entrepreneur. Okay, cool. Uh, because a lot of um, people that are interested in education and, and business coaching, but there's very few that actually you know, practice it and actually build a successful business, um, but which obviously you've done. Was the first business an education business that you, you know, you built? Well, first through? company was a marketing company in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So we were an outsourced uh, marketing organisation. We had some really good clients, actually, like some BRW Fast 100 clients at the time. People that essentially wanted to deploy good marketing campaigns but didn't want to do it in-house, they would outsource it to mm -hmm. us. And so that was my first company. Uh, my second company was training in a lot of the universities and high schools around Melbourne around mindset and, and emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. EQ, for students. Uh, my third business was a company called MBE. Uh, and that was my first real home run, if you like. MBE, we would help small to medium-sized businesses raise money from investors, acquire businesses and build value and ultimately exit uh -huh. businesses. Right. And so it was through that venture that we enabled our clients to raise over $300 million. Mm -hmm. uh, MBE became one of the country's fastest growing companies. And so that gave me the financial foundation, the credibility to then sort of come back to, to my dream, which was to start the entourage, which mm. started in 2010. You've had some challenges along the way. I know all <laughs> entrepreneurs have, but you've, you've had some big ones. Do you mind sharing like one of the, one of the big challenges that you had and how you overcame it? So uh, the biggest challenge is 2016. So between 2010 and 2015, we were growing at over 100% year on year. You know, I started on Trojan in 2010. By 2015, we had a valuation of $62 million. And so we had built a highly successful business. In 2015, 16, we went into accredited education. We'd never been into accredited education before which is essentially government funding, government qualifications, yep. so diplomas, advanced diplomas, that sort of stuff. We came into the space, we did it incredibly, we launched into it incredibly successfully, but then government changes meant that um, essentially the government was withholding cash from the industry mm. for about six months, which became nine months, which for us was cumulatively about $6 million, which was easy to bridge, it was easy to bridge that gap. But then at the end of that, which was about September of 2016, they, they fundamentally changed the space. They had some dodgy providers in the space, and so rather than re-regulate accredited education to mitigate those dodgy behaviours, they essentially came through with a wrecking ball and, 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 and flattened the entire industry yeah. and with three months' notice. And so what that meant is that we were three months away from a monthly loss of eight hundred thousand dollars right mm. three months away from a monthly loss of eight hundred thousand dollars i had 90 staff at the time we needed to peel back to 40 staff and we found <coughs> ourselves with no business model because we needed to come out of accredited uh no products in market that were going to survive beyond three months mm -hmm. uh 90 staff that had become 40 and um you know so began the hardest 18 months of my did life. you consider you know, ending it at that point, you quit owning the business? 
I don't think I ever, I mean, it was, put it this way, I was meeting with liquidators and administrators. You know, I was meeting with the people that... Considering were, the options. Well, it just looked like we weren't going to be able to survive. Yeah. And so I would never, I would never put up the white flag and say I'm done. But, you know, I mean, in, in that kind of a context, any number of different stakeholders can come and put a bullet through your business and you're done. Yeah. And so, um, and so, I, and so I was meeting with the administrators and liquidators, but I, I tell you what was, uh, there was a couple of fundamental drivers. For me, entourage is more than just a commercial business. I view it as my life's work and, and my mission, right? Mm. And further to that, there's a lot of people, you know, we've now got a community of 400,000 people that are really engaged in what we're sure. doing and incredible mm. members and incredible staff. And then uh, I was thinking back to breaking the cycle. You yeah. know, when I was eight, nine years of age and the government ruined that organisation, I needed to break the cycle yeah. of governments destroying great organisations. And so I was just so committed to yeah. not, not quitting. And so what did you do? Change the model? What was the solution? So, uh, you know, triggered 50 redundancies in a day, which is similar to cutting off your right arm when you have a culture yeah. like we do. Uh, that took us from 90 to 40 people. Uh, we restructured the business, re de developed a whole new product suite, developed a very aggressive stance toward um, sales and marketing and, yeah. and making sure we're delivering. And then in stakeholder management, right? Managing the banks, managing... You and know, a lot of your competitors would have got wiped out during that period, surely? I think we were the only private business college in the country to survive. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can make it through that... It, yeah, know. exactly, and we're still here, right? And so here's the thing, and this is the interesting lesson for, 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 for any entrepreneur or any professional, mm. is that, yes, that, that started the hardest year and a half of my life, maybe a couple of years of my life, but when you, when you start to come out of the other side, you come out of it so much better. You come mm. out of it smarter, stronger, wiser, better able to manage risk, mm. better able to manage finance, uh, better able to manage people. Because anyone can lead in good times. It's how do you lead when the business is doing that? Mm. And so the strength that you derive from it as a human being, as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, as a financial controller, yep. is, is, is the best education program you could hope for. Yeah, well, exactly. It's what you need to be able to, you know, have the impact you're ha having on all these different entrepreneurs these yeah. days. What are you excited about in your business at the moment? What's happening with the Entourage Whip? So I, I suppose at the moment we're most well known these days for our Elevate program, right? Okay. And so we started an Elevate program about a year and a half ago, which is our exclusive elite membership for seven-figure business owners looking to scale to eight. They're not all looking to scale to eight, but most of them are. And there are some eight-figure business owners in there that are looking to, you know, build a business that can mm -hmm. scale beyond them. Um, and so, you know, we've now got 110 members in that body. It's an average revenue of $3.5 million. And so, um, you know, there's about, th there's over $350 million in annualized revenue just in this exclusive right. community of, you know, 110 people alone, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so it's Australia's most high performing elite, um, community of seven figure business owners who are rising to the top of their game. And so. Um, we do incredible things together. You know, I just got back from a week on Daydream Island where we had 80 of us there, which was just the most profound week. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing some really interesting things in that space, which are exciting. And then we're also on the other end of the spectrum for, you know, like seed stage businesses we've just launched on demand, which is essentially digital offerings of everything you need to have access to in order to start a business mm -hmm. and, and to scale, you know, from let's say zero to a million. Um, and so that's got great international scalability potential. So we're excited about that as well. Okay, because I know you've got some big goals. Yeah, <laughs> as always. Um, I know we're limited with time and I really want to ask this question. So uh, what is, what's the like, most important habit you think an entrepreneur can develop to be successful? Um, the most important habit, I would say, is um, developing the habit of resilience. Because if you're growing, it's incredibly hard. If you're going the opposite way, it's incredibly hard. If you've plateaued, it's incredibly hard. I mean, it, and, and, and the larger you grow, I think a lot of the time, you know, when you start a business, like when I'm doing 100 grand, man, that'll be awesome. And then you get to that, you're like, oh, I've still got problems. And you, when I get to a million dollars, man, that'll be awesome. I won't have any more problems, you know, I'll, be, I'll go to the beach. And then, then you get to there and you're like, nah. And then you go, oh, when I'm at $10 million, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't get easier. You know, a great principle that I love is that the, um, the athlete, the Olympic athlete finds their sport every bit as challenging as the amateur. 
mm. which is really interesting. Just because someone's really good at something doesn't mean that they find it easy because you're performing and you're competing at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so I think resiliency and sticking, like being able to stick with it and grind through it and to keep that grit for five, 10, 20, 40 years yeah. is what makes great entrepreneurs. Yeah, I had a feeling you'd say something like that. <laughs> Being uh, comfortable, being uncomfortable, yeah, is kind of like I mean, it's 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 absolutely necessary to be an yeah. entrepreneur. Because as the entrepreneur, you're the pioneer, right? So if you view an organisation as like this this revolution, or you know, and and the entrepreneur, you're the vanguard of that revolution. By mm -hmm. definition of your role, you're constantly navigating uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. You want to build a sales team, you're the one that's going to go out and figure out how to do it and recruit the people. You want to mm -hmm. expand into a new state or a new country, you need to. And so by definition, the role requires you to live outside your circle of competence. And that means living outside your comfort zone, mm -hmm. which means by definition, you're uncomfortable, mm. you know, a lot of the time. And so you really need to do, you need to develop a comfortability with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and building a community like this where entrepreneurs can come together and share ideas and, and learn. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's unique, you know, yeah. there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't have that kind of support that have to go and figure it all out on their own, make mistakes. So being able to, um, you know, come together and support each other is pretty unique. First six months I was in business, I was uh, I couldn't talk to half my family members. Right? Why? They, they thought I was insane. They thought I was making. <laughs> they thought I was making it up. They're like, ah, oh, no, you're, you've got a job somewhere, haven't you? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? Um, I'm sure everyone can relate to that, right? It's, it's, it's very isolating. The first year I was in business, I found it very isolating. Yeah, we need to change the mental model in this country and in a lot of countries to normalise somebody following their own path. Because mm. right now it's like, are you going to become an accountant or a lawyer or a carpenter? Mm. It's like, none of them, you know. Very few people fit into those boxes in 2019 and beyond. Yeah. So. You know, you, you talk about, um, you know, your losses in business. People are like, well, why don't you just go get a job? And then you come, you know, come to your best friend's place and you say, oh, I made a 20 grand sale today. And then he's like, what a wanker. You know? Yeah. So it's like you yeah. can't celebrate the wins. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't, you you can't explain the losses. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, you know, having friends that are other entrepreneurs is, is invaluable. Yeah, uh, correct. Um, yeah, Co community and network is, I mean, it's, it's very hard to sustain the challenges I was talking about earlier. If, if, you, if, you, if you don't have anyone around you that gets it. Mm, yeah, absolutely. This brings me to the final and potentially most important question of the day. Right. Which is, if you could be a superhero, Jack, who would you be and why? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So my team would kill me if I didn't say Iron Man. Um, now, I'm not all that uh, ufa with what Iron Man does, but they created this... There's going to be an image here now. Of... Right, yeah, yeah. So you would have seen it on Instagram, right? They created... They, they were being very overly complimentary to me a couple of weeks ago, and um, and are now referring to me as Iron Man. So I'm not sure why that is, but we'll put well, could the be image worse. up and... Uh, it could be worse. You guys can judge for yourselves. <laughs> awesome. Jack, it's been a pleasure. I really, really appreciate um, catching up with me while you're in WA. Thanks, Nathaniel. And huge, huge fan of everything you're doing, man. I'm, you know, seeing the LinkedIn Hero series and all the interviews that you're doing. It's incredibly important work that's shining a light for the very people that we're talking about, right? People that are going through this journey and, and don't have people that they can lean on. And even those that do are sort of gleaning insights from the work that you're doing. So on behalf of all of us, man, thank you. Appreciate it, mate.